It's the middle of March, and after six months in hibernation, Bromyard's ground at Flagoners Green awaits the busy 2019 season. Early April sees the beginning of work on the ground, getting the ancient roller going, using the combi rake on the square, and cutting the outfield. Plenty of other jobs need doing around the ground, such as putting the covers on the covers and sticking the nets up. A couple of weeks later and everything's ship shape and ready for the season. Gale force winds and 8 degree temperatures greeted the first as they travelled to Bell Broughton for their second match of the season. Eight degrees with four degrees, chill factor. A 50 from Captain Zaid led the first to a winning draw. All in all, it was good effort. So it's better than last. The batting was a lot better than last week. So we have improved. So just keep that going and keep me going. <laughs> but I'm probably the dead man more than all of you. <laughs> At home the following week against Droitwich, a 50 from overseas player Josh van Rensburg led Bromyard to a nervy four-wicket victory. <laughs> he's all right. These, these two are all right. They don't trigger me. Pat Kelly from Starfield. He triggered Rob, didn't he? I don't know. He's swinging it away and he's padded up and it's hit him on about leg stump. Yeah, but Matt said that they, they reckon it's fixed outside leg. Yeah. Bye, yeah. Josh! Bad thing, we take the responsibility, yeah, it wasn't right, ball wasn't out, but it happens. Make sure that the good thing about all of that is somebody get in and he see us through. That's whoever gets in, got to see us through. So, enjoy the win. Is anybody want to say anything? I learn from the mistakes we made, and that's the most important thing. I think in the field, we also need to pick it up a bit more. I think we dropped four catches today. One myself, two yarn, who else? Was there um, any other drops? Same Murray, who was saying, <laughs> saying all of that, that would have be, cost be us my personal points. opinion, I think consideration. I don't think we consider that. First win of the season meant the first of many late nights in the bar. However, the first endured what would turn out to be their worst run of the season, going down to two successive defeats. First away at league leaders Colwall, where they were bowled out for just 47, and then at home to Pedmore, where they lost by 70 runs. Squarelegs, says bad luck. An inspirational performance from the captain, Zahid, with 41 and 7 wickets for 19 bowling spin, led to an important victory away at Cookley as the season approached the halfway mark. Only for rain to wash out the following week's fixture, despite the best efforts of the ground staff with the extra tarpaulins and the bow dry water hog. So what to do when a match is rained off? Well, you can stay indoors and hit some balls of a different kind.
Yeah. I'll get some footage. Shots. <laughs> oh, what? Earlier, is it? Yeah, yeah. Not far off. Wednesday night senior nets are an important and popular part of the season, particularly with the club's younger players, and the first, seconds and thirds all practice together. Meanwhile, England had the little matter of a World Cup semi-final at Edgbaston. That Sunday, after an incredible game at Lords, cricket did come home. Sunday game at Bewdley had a slightly more relaxed atmosphere than Lords and it's an important part of keeping older players involved in the game and giving youngsters their first taste of senior cricket. They actually played up the pitch though, Harry said. Have they? Yeah. Because I went up there the other day and they had rugby players up there, so they were so used. Oh! <laughs> no ball. No ball. James, make sure we're getting a stable base, then we're bowling, okay? We're not stable when we're bowling. Finley, please get the ball for him, it's in your net. Hey? Okay. Junior training is vitally important if a cricket club is to be sustainable, and Bromyard's young overseas player Josh van Rensburg has played a hugely important part coaching the juniors over the last few years. As soon as he comes on to ball, he runs away. <laughs> well, that's you need to be standing on your stumps there. That's much better. Better, Finley. No, no, it was quite an accident. He's from here. Yeah, he is. But he's working on it. Back in league action, the first lemon had a frustrating afternoon at Droitwich, waiting in vain for it to stop raining for some five hours before the match was finally called off. Monthly committee meetings keep everything ticking behind the scenes and can get quite heated. This was one of the more relaxed ones. Uh, anybody else? Can we 
From Yard in second place, it was time for the biggest match of the season so far as league leaders and local Herefordshire rivals, Colwell, visited Flagler's Green. It's not in the second, it's not in like a secondary school. Ian Bullock making his maiden first 1100. Bromyard came out victorious to close the gap at the top. I could have bring an ad back, a uh, great back. I want you to have a taste of how to feel the, the heat of the game and how how you go about things. So it's learning. Through every time, every time. So it's overall, it's good ground fair, catching is what great, so it's all that <laughs> <good> performance. <laughs> so I see you now. Bar, bar, me. Bar. Greg, you mean? Uh, I'll say snap away. Enjoy it. Good one, Sam. Uh, well played. Like A rapid victory away at Pedmore as the title race heated up meant that there was time to go and spy on Bell Broughton and Hagley, two other challengers for the league title, on the way home. The evening league team also had a season to remember, picking up two trophies, helped by this rather contentious LBW. <laughs> It only goes for me to give uh, the trophy to Bromyard. Unfortunately, the real trophy is somewhere lost at Barnard Green, so we're going to use the duplicate for this one. Um, so, we're going to get some photos. Oh, yeah. If it does get found in Barnard's Green, they'll get dropped off here, hopefully by next week's final of the Thompson Cup. So, um, Bromyard, captain. rain looked like washing out the match at home against Old Swinford, but half an hour later the sun came out and Bromyard cruised to another comfortable victory as they kept the pressure on Colwell at the top of the table. Last two games for I'll find out if uh, Gill and Cole again. Meanwhile, the junior section concluded their season with a match on a Sunday morning against their parents, followed by the prize giving for the under 11s, 13s, and 15s. Bromyard went into their final home match of the season against Hagley, knowing that a victory would guarantee them promotion and still leave them with an outside chance of winning the title. On a used pitch that favoured both sides' spin bowlers, a low scoring match ensued, but Bromyard came out on top by 60 runs to guarantee promotion. Come on, boys. Well done. Amazing. Well done. Well done. Brilliant. Right, I've got, yeah, to, see, yeah, I've got the strippers booked for next Saturday night. That's all right, we're having something tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't waited until next week, have something tonight. Get him in.
Already guaranteed promotion, news came through via text that Colwell had lost and Bromyard would thus require just three bonus points from their final game of the season to win the league. With a nod to Jack Leach's reenactment on the Headingley Square of his match tying single, it was time to reenact the vital short leg catch that had dismissed Hagley's Australian captain. Okay, right, I'm here with Josh. Um, Josh, well done on this season. Can you uh, just describe your thoughts on this season as a whole? Uh, hello, Ed. <laughs> hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks, Ed. <laughs> uh, the season, wow, what a season. First time I've won the league with Bromyard and with any club, actually. I've come second before with other clubs. Yeah. So for to win it for once is quite an experience. We started off at the top actually for most of the first quarter we fell off after i think it was our cold middle, game in the middle of it yeah we had a, a bit of a yeah slump. sort of five games in yeah we had a bit of a slump there lost our top spot but then i think about halfway through the season just before halfway our captain started bowling and since then our bowling unit just really clicked all together and probably led us through to this season win so you've been at Bromyard for three years now. Um, what do you? Th what are the biggest things you've learned from three seasons playing in England? Um, I think it's dramatically in, um, increased my knowledge of the game. Playing in different conditions, for one thing. Playing with different people as well. It's taught me a lot of different skills that I've been able to use back home and here as well. Because um, obviously you're still a very young, you know, you came over here as an 18 year old, you're still only 21. Yeah. So I mean, that, you're going to learn a hell of a lot at that age, aren't you? Yeah. In my first year, I got to, well, all my three years I've played for Bromyard, I've got to play with an ex first class international, or ex well, first class under 19 international. Yeah. yeah, under 19 international, which is He's helped me a lot with my bowling as well. Even with my batting, he's been able to say a few things that stick or stuck with me over the years. So it has dramatically improved it. And also the enjoyment of playing in a different country as well just was a nice refreshing thing as an 18-year-old just to come out here and experience that. Do you find it rewarding? Oh, I find it very rewarding. I mean, over the three years you've been here, I mean, you know, you must have seen some lads really develop from sort of being no hopers. Definitely, so. definitely. Um, we've got one that's playing in the first team with us. Uh, a couple that I see playing in the first team in a couple of years as well. I mean, one broke a record recently for Bromyard. Definitely see him playing in a few years. Um, but I find it very rewarding getting, seeing the light in a kid's eye when he learns how to play a new shot or bowl a new ball or be able to bowl six on the spot or take a wicket. It's just, I find that very rewarding. You should be pretty sure you'll be coming back here next year, fingers crossed. Um, what are your your cricketing aims sort of in the near future for yourself and for Bromyard and say 10, year, ten years down the line? 
Um, I'm just taking it year by year at the moment, season by season, just enjoying my game. I did have some dreams to go further, but now I'm just trying to focus on enjoying every game that I can. I feel that if I'm looking too far into the future, trying to push for something out there, it's making me enjoy the game a lot less and bringing my performances down. Whereas for the first time this year, I have taken it a bit slower and I've, I felt I've bowled better, I've batted better. We're putting less pressure on yourself? Putting less pressure on myself, but that's always been a problem of mine. I've always put a lot of pressure on myself. And would you say, I mean, do you have any sort of aims for the club? It's all five, obviously we've got promotion this year to the Premier Division of the Worcester League, which is a great achievement for a small town like Bromley. You know, what, yeah. do, you, do you have any ambitions for the club in the next few years? I, I have I always have ambitions to go further and to win everything or get higher. So I would love to see if Bromley are going up to Birmingham Premier, they could make it up there. Um, but, yeah, I would just like to win as much as I can at Bromyard and take them as far as I can. That's brilliant, Josh. Yep, thanks for your time. All the best. Thank you very much, Ed. <laughs> Bromyard got the bonus points they needed to win the league, bowling first in the final game of the season. But the rest of the match was rather a damp squib as they went down to a 48-run defeat. Few, couple of words, yeah. Today, don't take any notice of that. Whatever the hard work you lot done, yeah, paid off game before, yeah. We got what we need from this game, so be be happy about the thing. So I don't want to be ruined the night and talking about it because that me that game doesn't mean nothing to us. We did what was mattered. That was the important part, and all of them justify that. So done well. And every single one of you, thank you very much to be a part of. And if anything I said or been harsh done by me, any point of the game, but it wasn't intentional. I just gone with the game where I thought it would be, would be how we can win this game. So I don't think any individual at times my people have a bit harsh done done by. It. So I don't take the serious by it. How about it? So. Thank you very much for everything and enjoy yourself. The defeat, though, didn't put a dampener on the championship winning end of season celebrations. Here's to 2020.